It's easy to think that when we give, not much happens. That's because we tend to think of it as a single transaction. We give, they get. The end. But what if there is more to the story? What if God is doing more than we know with our gift? Good news, He is. When we give, we are doing more than we know because God does more than we could imagine in three key ways. God works through us. We become a pipeline through which His blessings flow. Instead of holding tightly to what He has given us, we must let it overflow into the needy world around us, allowing God's glory to shine. God works with us. We become partners in His mission to renew and restore all things to Himself. Through our prayers, presence, gifts, service, and witness, we join in the gracious work He has already begun. We become co-creators, shaping His world for good. God works in us. We become participants in His work of grace within our own hearts. Our giving helps transform us even as we bless others. And as we align our treasure with what He treasures, we reveal the work He is doing in our hearts to make us more like Jesus. What happens when we give? More than we could ever imagine. Give generously and discover what God can do because of you. Join Impact Church St. Louis online where we're always doing something. Spread the word. Join us every Sunday for worship service live on YouTube and Twitch at 9 a.m. Then at 11.15 a.m. on Facebook. Connect with us for corporate prayer Thursday morning at 7 a.m. via conference call at 618-627-5055. Then later live on Facebook at 6 p.m. Join us for online communion service Wednesday, June 16th at 7 p.m. Only on YouTube. Calling all new members, don't miss our next session of SyncLink. That's Wednesday, July 21st at 7 p.m. You can sign up today at www.impactchurchstl.com forward slash connect to impact. Oh my God, I'm so happy that we're coming back because I am so tired of streaming from my bed. I miss people. There's nothing like worshiping with a other with the body of believers. I'm so excited. It is time. <laughs> it's time. It is time. Registration opens on June 14th at 9 a.m. Register online at www.impactchurchstl.com. For more information on what's happening at Impact Church St. Louis, visit our website at www.impactchurchstl.com. We can't wait to see you. It's time. another week of worship right here at Impact Church St. Louis. Now if this is your first time worshiping with us, we are humble with your presence and we are glad that you chose to worship with us this morning. You can follow us on Facebook and also subscribe to our YouTube page. If the Lord is leading you to give, you can go to our website at impactchurchstl.com and hit the give tab. Now we pray and we hope that your mind is prepared for service right now. Well, praise the Lord. It's a pleasure and a privilege to present the word of the Lord for the people who need the Lord. And I will be coming from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 57, and that is from the ESV version, and it reads, But thanks be to God, who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Father God, because of you, we are victorious. Because of you, we're the head and not the tail. Because of you, Lord God, 
We can and we will live and not die. God, because of you, Lord, we're champions in the faith, oh God. But Father God, it's because of you, Lord God, that you want us, Lord God, to declare your works in the field in every season, Lord God. Lord God, we just thank you today. We thank you, Lord God, that you want us to represent. You want us, Lord God to be, Lord God, men and women of faith, God, fighting as champions, Lord God, and you want us to win souls and make disciples. Well, Lord God, because of you, Lord God, we're able to do just that. So, Lord God, let us be mindful. Let us make sure, God, that we go ahead and keep on that shirt of victory, that, and we wave the banner of victory, Lord God, encouraging us, reminding us daily that we are more than conquerors. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning, impactors. Are you ready for worship? Do you believe that God will do exactly what he said he will do? I know that he'll do it. Here we go. Well, the Lord, he's everything to me. And he said he would my comfort. Praise the Lord. 
Thank you guys for this opportunity. I want to first of all say um, thank God for this opportunity. I want to certainly give honor to the pastor of this great church, Pastor Ron. Uh, and First Lady, I want to say thank you to the officers and members of this wonderful church. Um, and so certainly to all of you who are just streaming with us today, we uh, want to say hello. Uh, all of you that I didn't call, didn't know to call, uh, but watching, I greet you in with Jesus' joy. For the Lord, for the joy of the Lord is our strength. I want you to turn with me to the second chapter of that very difficult book to find, Genesis. Hallelujah. Genesis, the second chapter. If you can't find Genesis, we are in major trouble. Genesis, the second chapter. I'm going to read a verse here and a verse there. Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 2. Verse 7 and 8, verse 15, and then 18 through 22. Reading out of the New International Version, you'll there you'll find these words. Then the Lord, God, formed a man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And the man became a living being. Now the Lord, God, had planted a garden in the east in Eden, and there... He put the man he had formed. Dropping down to the 15th verse. The Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to work it and take care of it. Once again, dropping down to the 18th verse, the Lord God said, It is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a helper suitable for him. Now the Lord God had formed out of the ground all the wild animals and all the birds of the sky. He brought them to the man to see what he would name them. And whatever the man called each living creature, that was its name. So the man gave names to all the livestock, the birds in the sky, and all the wild animals. But for Adam, no suitable helper was found. So the Lord God caused the man to fall into a deep sleep. And while he was sleeping, he took one of the man's ribs and then closed up the place with flesh. Then the Lord God made a woman from the rib he had taken out of the man and brought her to the man. For the next few moments, I want to share some really good news for you, Impact. You're blessed. You're blessed. Come on, if you're streaming with me, I need you to type, I'm blessed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Type, I'm blessed. Hallelujah. Let's go to God in prayer. Gracious God, our Father, we thank you for this day and this time. We thank you for this opportunity to hear from you, O oh God. So as, as you speak, O oh God, open the eyes of our understanding that we might see you. Open our ears, O oh God, that we might hear you. Awaken us today, O oh God, through the power of your word. Speak to our hearts. Speak to our minds. Speak to our conditions and our relationships. Speak to our purposes. In the strong name of Jesus Christ, our resurrected King, we give you glory, honor, and praise. Amen. In a time in which we are dealing with police brutality, racism, inequality in the workplace and a pandemic that has taken the lives of nearly 600,000 Americans out of control violence we need some good news every time you read the newspaper or watch the news we hear of another child being killed by a stray bullet a police officer killing the unarmed unrest in the Middle East, divided politics that seem to work only in the favor of the powerful and the wealthy. We need some good news. Well, I've come today on an assignment, people of God, to tell you that in the midst of all the gloom and all the doom, God can and will help you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, somebody. I said God can and will help you. I've got some good news. In fact, I want to tell you that you are blessed. He's done some things 
for you that you may not be aware of. In our text today, we find God at the beginning of the of, of, of scripture here, uh, creating and forming the world. We see in this in the second chapter of Genesis that he he forms Adam in his image and then he breathes into him. I want to deal with this thing really quickly. It's some good news in this text, people of God. First thing we see is that he forms him. Hallelujah. When when he forms him, he makes him in his image. That means we are built to do what God does. Oh, my God. I said, we're not quitters. When God made us, he didn't use any recyclables. I said he made us in his image. That means that whatever God does, we have the ability to do the same thing. God, we see in, throughout in the scripture, God could uh, speak a word and, 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 and something from nothing would come. I'm telling you, we have the same ability to cause things to be just through the power of our word are y'all hearing what i'm saying i'm saying we're not losers we're not quitters we're not down we're not poor we are the righteousness of god because we have been made in his image hallelujah we've been made in his image god the bible teaches us here that god not only forms adam but then he breathed into him i want to help somebody here breath is an indication of life without breath you are are, are dead oh my god without death in some cases you are just existing have you ever met somebody who who they they, they got a pulse but they're not alive oh my god have you ever been in a relationship oh my god that that we we hang out but we're not uh god hasn't breathed on a, in, into our relationship are y'all hearing me today i'm saying sometimes you can have a form but not have breath you can have you ever found yourself in in a situation where you were connected to some people they got they seem like they got structure but 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 the truth of the matter is that when you dig a little deeper they have not been breathed oh my god they've not been breathed into Breath is an indication of life. Without breath, you're just here. Without God's breath, you're, you're just existing. You're not living. Came to shake us up today. Some of us are not thriving because we've not sat down long enough to allow the Holy Spirit to breathe into us. We're such a, in su such a hurry, so disconnected from the presence of God that we know of God, but we ha have not been able to know God in such a hurry to get somewhere that we don't make time to sit in, in, in prayer we don't take time to read the scripture we come to church but we our mind is on what we're going to eat after the service uh, am i making sense listen i don't care how much money you have i don't care how many degrees you have unless god breathes on you you're just existing you have not been yet made alive Breath is an indication of power. If you're streaming with us, I need you to type power. Watch this. God gives us power. Notice he notices in the, te in the text that he gives a man form before he gives him power. This is important, people of God, because sometimes if, if we don't allow God to form us in the way that he desires, we'll take the power that he gives us and we'll use it for our purposes. Am I making sense? So he, he has to form us before he gives us the power. And but, but, but the good news is, is that he will, hallelujah, give us power. Somebody say power. God has given us power. Well, we see something really interesting in this scripture. Uh, and, and, and we see that God breathes into the nostrils of man. In my sanctified imagination, I asked the question. I said, God, why would you breathe into the nostrils and not the mouth? It seemed like seemed like to me that the mouth has a bigger bigger opportunity is a bigger opportunity for you to get air into the man. Seemed like to me that you are, you 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 make it doing it the hard way. Oh my God! Well, I looked up online. I went to Google and I I I went to the American Lung Association and and I began to research this thing about breath. And I and I you know what I found, people of God? I found out that that nose breathing is more effective than mouth breathing. 
Oh my God, y'all need to hear this. If you would go to the American Lung Association, you would find out that the nostril, uh, uh, when we breathe through the nose, um, it, the nostril is acting as a way to purify the air in which we breathe. Oh, my God. Did you hear what I said? I said that the, 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 the website said that the hair in our noses are used to cut down viruses and bacteria as we breathe. Why is this important to us? It is because when God blesses us, when God breathes into us, God is going to do it in the most effective way possible. He's going to do it in a way that no witch can curse it, that no generational curse can stop it. When, oh my God, when God decides to bless us, he's going to do it in a way that none of your haters can block it. He's going to do it in a way, oh my God, that even you can't even stop it. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. Can't you get excited today, people of God, that, that he's given us power? And not only does he give us power, but he's blessed us in such a way. Hallelujah. That nothing can stop it. <laughs> that when God blesses us, he will do it in the most effective way possible. Well, understanding this principle that makes that means that some of the things that we endure, we need to endure, not because God uh, takes pleasure in it, but it's because there's an effective strategy that God is utilizing. He's molding us. Oh my God. In the way that he transfers the power to us, it's a way that he's shaping us and, and molding us into his very image. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? So, so we need to understand that God is not interested in just giving us power. He's interested in giving us power in a way that we can handle, in a way that is effective, in a way that will accomplish the purposes that God has sent. Wait a minute now, preacher. What you talking about purpose for? Not only does he give Adam power, but notice he gives him power right before he gives him power purpose oh i wish y'all would stay in the scripture here with me if you go back and you look at the text here we see in verse number seven god breathes into him but in the very first and very next verse in verse eight we see god places him in a garden Oh my God, this is important because some people are waiting to exhibit power after they get promotion. I need you to understand something, people of God. God, before he gives you the promotion, you are who he's already created you to be. You don't need to wait for anything. God says, I've already given you the authority to trample over serpents and scorpions. He says, I've already given you the power to accomplish the purpose because I can't give you a purpose unless I give you power to fulfill the purpose, which means God is an orderly God. He has, oh God, did you hear what I said? He gives us the power before he reveals the purpose. Are you seeing what I'm seeing here? Tell somebody I'm blessed. I've got power in me. And oh my God, not only do I've got power, but I've got purpose. Somebody scream purpose today. Oh my God, he's given us purpose. Purpose to break some stuff up of our families. Purpose to uh, enhance the kingdom. Purpose to transform our communities. Purpose to break some generational curses. Purpose, oh my God, to leave a legacy for our children. He's given us purpose. Hallelujah. But he gave us power to fulfill it. I want to speak to directly to somebody who, who's struggling as to how, how, how. Can I tell you the thing about this particular scripture that blows my mind is, is that Adam never, never once after he, he became a living soul said, God, uh, I, I, I want to go do this. And God, I want to go do that. God commissioned him the moment he gave him the power. Am I, am I, listen to this. Listen, when God gives you some power, there is a purpose connected to it. And do you notice that it is, that the purpose came with some work? Oh, my God. Do y'all see this? Do y'all see this? He says to him, I, I, I'm, I'm putting you in this garden, but I want you to take care of the ground. See here, I, I know we've been shouting that we got power and we got and that we got purpose. But but with those things, the Bible teaches us that to whom much is given 
Much is required. And so it is important that even when I don't feel like it, I got to do my purpose. Even when I don't like, oh my God, working with sister and brother so-and-so, I still got to do my purpose. Why? Because as I'm fulfilling my purpose, God is working through me and he's working on me. Oh my God, did you hear that? I say he's working through me and he's working own me as people of God listen to me as you do what God has called you to do he's working some stuff into you oh my God he's working some stuff out of you have I got a witness that the Lord still need to work some stuff out of you oh come on and be honest and shame the devil today he's still working on me I'm still a work in progress hallelujah oh blessed be the name of the Lord God so so not only does he give us power not only does he give us purpose, he also does something here that messes me up. He gives us provision. Oh my God, if you're if you're if you're writing, if you're writing this down or typing and streaming here, I need you to write, he's giving me provisions. Come on, we're still talking about you being blessed. You got power, you've got purpose, hallelujah, and you've got provision something that 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 piqued my curiosity can i show you something in the scripture do you notice that adam never once asked for a wife hello oh y'all didn't hear that see some of us uh, get this thing twisted we out here looking for somebody but can i show you something in the scripture the scripture shows us that while adam was working god recognized his needs oh did you hear that i'm telling you people of god that when you do what god calls you to do god will recognize your needs he's the type of god who will anticipate your need and as he anticipated Adam's need, the Bible says he caused Adam to fall asleep into a deep sleep. Can I help you? While you are asleep in your stupor, while you are minding your own business, oh, bless his holy name, God is behind the scenes creating an infrastructure. He's creating a, 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 an ability for you to do what he's called you to do. He, how old did you hear that? I say, while you are minding Finding your own business and doing that which he's called you to do, God is behind the scenes creating something to help you. Notice the Bible doesn't say, he says, I'm just going to send you any kind of help. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. The Bible says, God says, I'm going to make you a suitable helper somebody screams suitable oh my god listen listen you've been planted with purpose and power and provision and so when god decides to bless you he's going to give you the very provision that you need to fulfill his purposes hallelujah hallelujah come on somebody thank god that when i think of the goodness of jesus i don't have to think very far back because when i wasn't thinking about god god met my needs oh did you hear that some of us got this thing twisted and we fall short of thanking him but i'm telling you today that you ought to thank him for some uh, for answering some prayers that you didn't even raise bible says in romans 8 the spirit of god maketh intercession for us because we don't even know what to pray for adam was out here didn't even know he needed help <laughs> oh come on here some of us got some blind spots and don't even know it. we don't even have sense enough to say god i need some help god oh i got some areas that i need to mature in but god who is rich in grace and rich in mercy will meet your needs even when you're not asking for it oh come on tell somebody you're blessed i'm blessed because i have purpose i'm blessed because i have power i'm blessed because i have provision and so he 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 he, he makes eve for adam can i can i help somebody you don't need to be out here in these streets in these streets <laughs> you ain't got to go looking for anything you need to expect 
Oh my God, did you hear what I said? I said, you don't have to go looking for anybody to help you. You need to just expect God to be God. And because he is God who loves you enough to not leave you by yourself, you need to know that God is going to send the help. He's going to send the resources. I'm preaching to somebody right now who's been wanting to start a, a, an organization or a, your own business. I'm telling you, don't worry about how it's going come to pass God is God and all by himself and he will send you the help that you need oh bless his holy name oh bless his holy name he will give you the purpose the power and he will give you glory to God the provision somebody shout hallelujah listen 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 I, I want to I want to give you a couple of points as you as, as we wrap this thing up I want to give you some homework if you're going to walk in the power and the purpose and provisions of God you need to know that everything starts with God oh my God did you hear that long before there was an Adam and Eve there was a God long before there were animals and birds in the garden there was a God if you're going to be blessed in your life you need to know that you need to focus more on the blesser and not the blessing because if you would focus on God God will blow your mind he will open up the windows of heaven hallelujah pull you out a blessing hallelujah that you won't have room enough to receive come on it all remember that it starts with God not only do you need to remember that it starts with God but people of God you need to be working on your purpose some of us too busy keeping up with the Kardashians. <laughs> oh my God. You need to be working on your purpose. Tomorrow is not promised, people of God. You need to be working. Go back to school. Go back to school. Oh, y'all don't hear what I'm saying. I'm telling you, it's some stuff that God wants to bless you with, but you got to do your part. Listen, the provision is connected to your purpose. If you would work your purpose, the provision is around the corner. You need to work your purpose. You need to work your purpose, people of God. Let me give you three, two more points real, and I promise we're going to be wrapping this thing up. Listen, you need to set some boundaries you're going to be blessed if you're going to walk in the blessings of God people of God you need to set some boundaries notice even though God gave Adam purpose power and provision he also told Adam don't eat of what oh, this tree over here listen some of us are way out of, of positioning because we don't live with boundaries we answer every text as if it's an emergency listen turn your phones off get off of Facebook for a few minutes and know that you need to get busy into the purposes that God has given you for your life you need to set some boundaries can I help you some of us never say no oh my god Lord, I could preach a whole series on the word no. <laughs> Listen, no is a complete sentence. Some of us never tell that family, how are you going to help somebody when you can't even help yourself? You need to tell some folks in your life, I don't have it this week. I'm a, Listen, I love you, but I got boundaries. I'm trying to save some money. No, I can't go to Golden Corral with you today. I'm trying to lose some weight. No, I can't go to the mall today. I'm trying to live with some with a, uh, within a budget. I'm preaching to somebody who's been living or you've been giving away your blessings because you've not been living with boundaries oh my god oh my god it all starts with god we need to be working on our purpose we need to set some boundaries <laughs> oh my god man i could stay on that thing too somebody say boundaries Hallelujah. By the way, can I throw this out there before I wrap, give you this final point? Listen, as you set boundaries, be, be prepared. Some folks going to get upset. <laughs> when you start telling people no, they're going to act. They, ooh, you acting all kind of funny. But the devil is a liar. They, the, some people don't even know that they're an instrument of the enemy. In, oh, my God. But because, be, and you need to understand that God will use people in your life. Oh, my God. Because they know you. The, the devil knows that you love them. He'll use them to get you to bypass the blessings of God. 
as you not utilize boundaries. Listen, church, I'm almost done. Listen, the final thing is, is we need to remember Jesus. We need to remember Jesus. What, what you talking about preaching? We in Genesis. Listen, the greatest power and the greatest provision and purpose that we could ever receive is through Jesus Christ. Listen, the Bible says in the book of Romans that according, according to the book of Romans that while we were sinners, Christ died. I'm preaching to somebody right now who, who you've been feeling like, I'm not blessed. I don't have purpose. I don't have provision. I don't have any power. And you've been walking around filled with low self-esteem. Can I tell you something? The fact that Jesus died for you is proof enough that God loves you. That God made you in his own image. That God loves you so much that he wants to have your relationship with, with you. So much so that he would allow his only son to die for you. I'm done preaching. I just, wanna, I just stopped by to tell you that you're blessed. Because God sent Jesus to die for you. And without him. You don't have any access to power. You don't have any access to purpose. You don't have any access to provision. Accept him today. Accept him today, people of God. Know that you're blessed. Know that God has blessed you with pr purpose, power, and provision. That he wants to use you in his kingdom. Hallelujah. We thank God for his word. We thank God for the power of his word. We trust God. That as he has breathed into us in the most effective way possible, hallelujah, that nothing can stop us. You believe that? Hallelujah. Nothing can stop us. Hallelujah. We're on the winning side because we have Jesus. Jesus is the best thing <laughs> that ever happened, ever happened to me. Let's pray. Oh, God, we thank you. We thank you for this day and this time. We love you. We appreciate you. We thank you. Oh God, we thank you. We thank you for the provision, the purpose, and the power that you have blessed us with. God, help us to not walk around in depression and anxiety and low self-esteem, doubting who we are. We are made in your image. You breathed into us, oh God. And because you breathed into us, God, we have your spirit. We are creative. Oh, bless your name, God. We are analytical. We're kings and queens, oh God. And so, Father, we pray for those who are watching right now. We speak a word over their lives right now that they are blessed. Blessed with power, provision, and purpose. Father, we pray, God, that those who may be struggling with their identity, struggling with what am I supposed to do with my life? God, we speak a word of purpose over their lives right now. We pray, God, that you will speak to their hearts, reveal to them their Eden. Speak to their hearts right now in the name of Jesus. God, for those who have been through some trauma, been through some things, and it's caused them to be wounded, oh God. Cause them to not think that, that they have anything to give. God, bless them. Keep them. Father, I pray that you right, would right now breathe on them. Breathe into them. In the name of Jesus. And, oh, God, finally, those who are just struggling, oh, God, who, who, who's got some problems, got some issues that they're facing. God, we pray for them. God, breathe into that situation. Breathe into that family. Breathe into those finances. Breathe into that spirit. Breathe into that, oh God, breathe into their minds. In the name of Jesus. We thank you now, God. We thank you now, God. Oh God, we close this prayer out saying thank you, God. That, oh God, we call it done in the name of Jesus. We believe it's done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We pray that you enjoyed your worship experience today. If the Lord is leading you to join Impact Church St. Louis, you can go to our website and hit connect. Now until next week, 
Keep impacting the world by imprinting God's image. Thank you.